Good afternoon or good evening, wherever you're located in the United States. I'm back after a relatively long hiatus of about a month, but there are some definite newsworthy events to get into on the west coast of the United States in terms of earthquakes. First of all, this morning, activity off the coast of Vancouver Island has dramatically ramped up. We've got a major outbreak of moderate earthquakes here off the coast of Vancouver Island. Roughly about 166 to 176 kilometers west of Port Hardy, Canada, near the Queen Charlotte Sound, northern end of the Cascadia Basin. Look at these earthquakes that hit. Started with a 5.2 earthquake at 8.44 a.m. Pacific time. Then we've got a 5.7 earthquake that hit roughly two and a half hours later at 11.13 a.m. Pacific time. Then suddenly another earthquake hits, a 6.0 right here, which hit about a half hour after that. And that was a 6.0 magnitude earthquake that struck at 11.49 a.m. Pacific time today. And then still not done, still not finished with earthquake activity over here near the Delwood Knolls. Another 6.0 hit about a half hour, I'm sorry, about an hour after that other 6.0. And that was at 12.56 a.m., I'm sorry, 12.56 p.m. Pacific time, so roughly three hours ago. So 5.2, 5.7, 6.0, and 6.0. That is some strong, powerful earthquake activity going on. And That is definitely newsworthy enough for me to say, you know what, drop what you're doing and get in here and start talking some earthquakes again. And we should be asking whether or not this same location is going to take another earthquake hit. I mean, why not? You've taken four. Are you going to take five? Are you going to take six? Are you going to take seven? So far, it's been silent for about three hours. So hopefully it's done. And we're moving on to the next step of what may happen, what may evolve from these four moderate earthquakes that struck off of Van- off the coast of Vancouver Island in the Cascadia Basin near the Juan de Fuca. Okay, hopefully it's done. And the question or concern, I should say, that I have right now for today and beyond through Christmas, the day after Christmas, over the next few days, but particularly I'd say the next 72 hours, I'm really concerned with the potential for another seven magnitude earthquake in Southern California or larger or hopefully smaller and hopefully not at all, okay? But this is the strongest chance that I've seen. Oh, while I'm talking, look at this, a 4.9 just hit Port Hardy, Canada. And uh, yeah, it's making me a little worried now. This just now hit as I'm doing this. That's a 4.9. Well, hey, hopefully I'll be standing in the next 72 hours to a week because uh, I'm concerned. Look, here's the truth, folks. You guys don't know this. I, free, I'm, I'm living between uh, this area, Southern California, and the in the uh, San Bernardino Riverside area, in here to Los Angeles and up here near in Fraser Park. I have multiple households and split some time between my family. So I'm in all these areas. And as you can see, no area is truly, truly safe. But my least safe area where I am right now, where I'm reporting from right now, is here in Fraser Park. So uh, why? Because look where the Garlock Fault and the San Andreas meet. They've been largely silent. So in that regard, I may be safe because they haven't been active. But in terms of geologic time, well, yeah, it, these are areas that are prone for massive earthquake activity. Um, so hopefully that doesn't happen, and hopefully I'll be I'll still be here. But this activity, I think, is going to cause problems here in the Ridgecrest area again, because 
This happened in July. And what happened in July? Well, July 4th and July 5th, early in the day, there were a lot of earthquakes in the exact same spot, exactly the same spot. And within 12 hours to two, three days, that's where Ridgecrest saw a 6.4 earthquake and then a follow-up with a 7.1 earthquake. Happened right after these earthquakes. And I see the same pattern. It's the same pattern. I mean, this is, you know, this is this is not good. Now, like I said, hopefully it doesn't happen. So if you live in Southern California, if you live in Ridgecrest, do not be surprised if another seven or greater is on its way. Wow, that's hard to say that. But hopefully that doesn't happen, especially considering I live in this area. July 5th, I had a water main that burst underneath my house. I lost my water heater. My water heater broke as well. So I had earthquake damage at my house. Wasn't fun, cost me a lot of money and I didn't have water for three days trying to fix that water main. I did the work myself because I didn't want to hire a professional to do it. And it was probably, well, it was just more cost effective for me to do it myself. But I'm looking at pro the possibility of having more damage and I'm not happy about it. So anyways, if you live here in Ridgecrest, be on watch. I'm over here in Fraser Park. Somehow that Ridgecrest earthquake, actually the 6.4 Ridgecrest earthquake cost me my water heater. The 7.1 burst the water main under my house. And I didn't find out till about three or four days later when all the water went up to the surface. And I knew something was wrong because after the 7.1 earthquake hit, I was having a water pressure problem when I was turning on my pipes. But we couldn't find any damage and it took a few days for all the water to come up to the surface. And in July, you know, you're trying to mow some grass because of all the growth. And I came across the water spot and had to dig up quite a few holes in the yard to find it. So uh, hopefully... I'll escape that, but I think I have bigger priorities, which is let's just make sure we're all prepared for quakes, okay? I think Ridgecrest is prone for activity as well as this creeping section of the San Andreas in the central California area. The last couple months has been a major uptick from Parkfield up through uh, these areas, Pinnacles, California, which one of my recent videos here near Pinnacles, I had explained that there was half of a volcano that ended up here in Pinnacles and the other half of a volcano was down here between where I, where I live and the Ridgecrest area in Ninach or Ninoch. Not sure how to pronounce that right now, but half of the volcano is still here and the other half is up near Pinnacles. So clearly the San Andreas is on the move. And it wouldn't surprise me if we get an earthquake pop between this creeping section and over here. All right, so how do we know that this these two areas are linked? Follow the plate boundaries. It's marked here on a USGS map. This clearly is the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. This is the Cascadia Basin. You see these earthquakes are happening in the northern end of the Cascadia Basin. If in July, this area had a lot of activity, I believe there were four earthquakes. If in July, those earthquakes preceded a 6.4 and a 7.1 earthquake in Ridgecrest, well, what's to say that the same pattern is not repeating itself again right now, and we just haven't seen Southern California pop? So the possibility is there, but... If we can see that link between earthquakes here and earthquakes down here in Southern California, then I think it's pretty obvious to say, you know from the events that happened that they're linked. You know from, you can just look at the plate boundary and you see how the Cascadia subduction zone leads right to the northern tip of the San Andreas and feeds that. So you can see it, you know from events, and we also know from historical record. It happened in July, might happen again, but it also happened in uh, when the Northridge earthquake happened in 94. This same area right off the coast near Vancouver Island had a few sizable earthquakes. And then we had a sizable earthquake in Northridge. So that doesn't mean it will happen. 
and hopefully it doesn't. It's more likely that it does not happen in Southern California because clearly there's a lot more days, hours, minutes that go by where there's not earthquakes than there are days, hours, minutes where earthquakes are actively occurring. Uh, However, there's definitely a strong link here. So for anybody living in the Cascadia subduction zone area, my concern would also be if Vancouver Island pops with big earthquakes or moderate earthquakes, I should say, and Southern California does not pop and you follow this plate boundary and you don't see earthquake activity ramp up here near Guatemala, Mexico City. If you don't see these areas uh, spike from the big earthquakes upstream, if you don't see Puerto Rico spike with earthquakes from upstream, if you don't see the mid-Atlantic Ridge pop, you know, over the course of the next anywhere from now to the next probably seven days, if you don't see a ramping up of earthquake in one of these hotspots, even if it's not necessarily a big earthquake, but clearly you could see days where it went from very small earthquake activity to a little bit more earthquakes or, you know, four or five times more earthquakes than usually happen on a given day. If you don't see a progression of increased activity, then my concern would be that the Cascadia Basin just ate it. Just took that energy and just increased the tension in this subduction zone area. And of course that is possible and it does happen as well. So hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully the energy moves on out. Preferably pops, you know, on the mid-Atlantic Ridge where nobody lives and, and it's not on land. But let's keep an eye out. Let's see what happens. And I'll be back if more information develops as things progress. I'll be back as long as I have power. On that note, emergency preparedness, if you live in this area, if you live in the West Coast, if you're concerned about earthquakes, you got to be concerned about power, how to stay warm. We're getting freezing rain and snow right now. We're going to have that for the next three, four days where I am. So if I lose my power, I'm going to have to go to backup generators. Question is, do the generators have fuel? Are the generators wet? It's raining outside. It's snowing outside. So I'm going to follow my own advice and go make sure the generators are dry, clean, ready to go, have a little fuel, not a little fuel, but full. And I'll make sure when I park my car today that my gas tank is full because if you lose power, the gas stations won't have power to supply you with fuel. If they do have power to supply you with fuel, if there's a rush to get fuel, the price will be high, the lines will be extremely long, and why not just avoid it? Just fill up your tank right now. Fill up a gas can or two right now, okay? Dust off your emergency plan. Make sure you know, you know what you're going to do. And uh, I'll follow my own advice. And hopefully you guys take care of yourselves, take care of your families, and do what you need to do to be prepared. Because when things happen, the more prepared you are, the easier it will be to continue with your lives with less interruption. For example, I had a water main that popped. Sounds crazy, and it is, but I found out when I bought the property, the water main is connected to a PVC pipe. I don't know why they did that. If, I, if Since it's my property, next time I'm down there and I'm underneath the ground, I'm going to make sure I have a steel pipe connecting to the water main, but that was there before I bought the house. So little things you can do to think ahead. I bought extra PVC pipe. I bought extra. I made sure I had the tools ready in case it happens again because I expect If Ridgecrest has another sizable earthquake, I expect that same PVC pipe water main to burst again. I'm expecting it. I thought it was a little shoddy. So next time I'm able to do some real digging, it'll be a steel pipe again. But these are the kinds of things you want to do to be prepared. So think the things that you should do that didn't work the last time around and try to try to uh, get on top of that and be ready for it to happen again. And that way you'll be in a better situation for the next earthquake than you were when the prior earthquake happened. All right, so I'll leave you with that. Take care of yourself, take care of your families. If anything else happens that's newsworthy, I'll jump in.